Well, one, once, oh, okay, it's kind of loud up here. <laughs> once again, uh, my name's Tony Kaufman. I've uh, been helping to look after the Lake Village Homestead Farm since 1991. Uh, I'm originally from Detroit, uh, so I don't really have any farming background until I came out to Lake Village, but luckily I had some really good camp experiences, and that's probably where I formed some of my early interest in working with animals and nature. Um, and that seems to be a real important ingredient for any environmentalist, any person that now in their older years has a desire to um, care and do things to better their own well-being and then their, the environment around them is to have an early childhood uh, in nature. Uh, and that's why um, Education is so important, uh, is, and when we say education, it's not just the um, uh, talking about it, academic kind, it's got to go far beyond that. It's got to be where you're getting uh, kids and adults uh, having hands-on experiences, working with animals, milking goats, planting potatoes, harvesting, uh, learning where their food comes from, seeing how important it is that, um, uh, that in order for food and farming to be healthy, that uh, nature has to thrive. And that's um, Wendell Berry. Farming cannot take place except in nature. Therefore, if nature does not thrive, farming cannot thrive. But we know, too, that nature includes us. It is not a place into which we can reach from some safe standpoint outside it. We are in it, and we are part of it while we use it. If it does not thrive, we cannot thrive. The appropriate measure of farming, then, is the world's health and our health, and this is inescapably one measure. So in 19... Uh, Roger Ulrich, uh, Professor Roger Ulrich, he's now retired, but he still lives at Lake Village. He worked with um, B.F. Skinner in the 60s, and B.F. Skinner wrote a book called Walden II, which I don't know if you've, you probably have heard of Thoreau, and he wrote a book called Walden, which was very much about getting back to nature, and so this was sort of a takeoff on that, and he designed on paper what he thought would be a good uh, kind of experience for people to learn um, how to improve relationships with each other and with the environment. And so that started a lot of communities throughout the nation and that gave uh, Roger the idea to start Lake Village. So in 71 he formed a non-for-profit, um, purchased a mile and a half of Let's see if I can do that. Um, this is kind of the main barn complex area, uh, but a mile and a half of undeveloped lakeshore on Long Lake that reaches all the way out to here, and then it goes back out quite a bit this way, and some of this land we've added since. And then there's, it's all contiguous, there's a few other parcels cutting into it. Uh, and maybe 450 people have lived at Lake Village over the years in a whole variety of uh, different kinds of housing from uh, old barns that were fixed up to teepees to camping to modern homes. Um, many of them decided they wanted to stay in the area and they bought some land surrounding the farm. We call that our cooperative. So there's maybe eight uh, homes or ten homes surrounding the farm and then the farm owns four homes and they're all uh, shared housing so people have privacy within the home but a lot of times they're sharing a bathroom or sharing uh, laundry or sharing a kitchen uh, but it's still considered like a single family home. I was looking for my water I'm gonna grab that. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> oh, 
the original farmhouse, I don't have a picture of it here, it was built in the 1880s and that's where people started out. Uh, but this, is, this one was built in about 73 and then we've just expanded onto it. And so maybe 10 people live in this house, including Roger and his wife and some folks that are here with us today. And, uh, and it's, uh, some, there's a chicken coop nearby, there's gardens nearby. Um, very much uh, instead of, uh, one of the things that came up when Lake Village first started forming this community is that the uh, township wanted in, for the community to be paved roads in a lot of different houses and curbs and street lights and, and that really wasn't the idea of getting back to the earth, of how to learn to live with less. The idea was to reduce, reuse, recycle, use the resources that we have. And so you'll see later even some pictures. Um, this is a 110-year-old horse barn that using recycled materials from buildings that were being torn down around town, bricks were put in, ceilings were put in, insulation was put in. Uh, we put in a nice what we call our community kitchen. Um, <clears throat> and even in this barn complex, gradually people started fixing up little spots in it where they started living in the 70s and in the 80s. And that went really well up until about 1995 when um, the township decided that they weren't going to allow that anymore. And so all those people that were using these recycled spots had to sort of, including myself, had to get out of there and then move into uh, what we have now is our up-to-code, considered up-to-code housing. This kitchen, we've had a lot of community meals there. Uh, it's also like a store. So when you become a member of the farm, you go in there and there's freezers in there. You have, uh, you get, you, we'll show you later, you pick out, um, you become a member and you get credits and then you exchange those credits for beef, pork, chicken, eggs, maple syrup, honey, cheese, and these are all items that were raised right at Lake Village. The farm has been doing grass-fed, pastured cattle for 40 years. Pastured kit, pigs and goats and, and uh, I know with, with the person that was talking about permaculture, um, it's really an amazing thing, grass-fed cattle. Um, Alan Savory, I don't know if you mentioned Alan Savory, but he's an ecologist from Africa. And he made the unfortunate mistake, which he learned from and suggest and thought, along with a lot of other uh, ecologists of that time, that elephants were causing desertification. And, <clears throat> but he learned from that and so they ended up killing a lot of element, elephants thinking that that was going to stop erosion and it didn't, it got worse. And so what they learned was that in her, animals and herds like elephants, like buffalo, like cattle, like wildebeest, if they're grazing intensely and putting down manure and then predators uh, or people force them to move, that actually enriches the ground. It actually um, starts to reverse the greenhouse effect, possibly even more than cutting emissions from vehicles. It creates grasslands that clean the water and a diverse habitat for all kinds of um, plants and animals, butterflies, bees. So, but thankfully now, grass-fed cattle is becoming a lot more popular uh, and, and, um, and the cattle are, of course, happier being out in the range than they would be in confinement. That one always gets a hit. Um, this is off on the roof of one of our houses. We have peacocks just kind of roaming around the place. Um, again, back to programs for children, adults coming out, learning how to raise food, 
and then learning how to teach so that they can then go on and teach younger people how to raise food um, is probably one of the most important things that we can do in our universities and in our middle schools and in our high schools is find a way to really press on um, academe to live the truth, to um, experience it, that there's no experiment other than the real situation. That's what Skinner was getting at in Walden too, is that you can't just experiment on others, um, run rats through mazes, or tell, get others worked up to do the job. You have to do it yourself, and then while you're learning to do the job, you, that's how you learn. That's how you, you make mistakes, and then you correct those make mistakes. And so for 42 years, Lake Village has just been this ongoing experiment, and we've had all kinds of wild things that have happened out there with people and with animals. And you can't just start a place like that in a day or in a year or in two years. You have to learn from it, and, 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 and it's an evolutionary kind of thing. Making apple cider. Um, just free time, free play time, outdoors, in nature. Uh, there's a book you may be heard of, uh, Last Child in the Woods, Saving Children from Nature Deficit Disorder, and how important it is even to be good at academics. You've got to have free play time. You've got to get outside and to know how to problem solve, um, whether it's climbing trees or building forts, or even just learning how to make repairs around the farm or around the house. That's Roger and his grandkids. <laughs> One of them's here with us. Or actually two grandkids are here with us. <laughs> of course, getting people out to the garden. Um, We uh, have worked closely with the Amish over the years. So we have uh, an Amish horse trainer down in Shipshawana. Uh, the Amish have actually come up to Lake Village uh, and, and done some construction for us. Um, Roger is from uh, Amish Mennonite background. Uh, it, so Lake Village has a lot of those elements in it, not the religious aspects, but the aspect of small scale extended family farm. So we, we try to always keep a buggy horse around, and we've taken the horse to the bank in downtown Kalamazoo. Um, this is part of the mile and a half of Lakeshore, so whenever we've built a house, the wetland stays wetland. The nature around it stays nature. The house is several hundred feet away from the lake. Uh, and that really is the only house on our mile and a half of Lakeshore that we've put there. All the other houses are inland. Some of our barns. This is the, so it's a farm and it's a nature preserve. And it's a school and it's an intentional community. Um, Roger's written a lot of books over the years. Uh, this is his most recent, Toward Living Well with Less, and it's a compilation of essays and articles um, written by him about Lake Village uh, and about some of his adventures, whether it was uh, going to Cuba or there's a letter from a uh, president now passed on uh, of Western Michigan University, uh, Dieter Heineke, where he expresses regret that he never brought his students out to Lake Village, even though he was teaching classes about intentional communities. Here we are, eight miles from downtown Kalamazoo, and that's sort of a, a, a symptom of what uh, academe has done, is that here's this hands-on learning center so close, started by a professor from Western, and what the, a lot of the people teaching those kinds of things at Western are 
more comfortable staying at the university and doing the teaching rather than getting their students out on the land, out on the earth, with their hands in the dirt. Um, but before he passed on, he wrote this letter expressing that he has finally started to see things more in accord with how uh, Roger's beliefs about being an environmental activist and in, a, in, in the kind of activist that, um, that doesn't just talk about it, but that actually does something different with their behavior. Here's a chance. So that chance to come out to Lake Village is an event that we have coming up May 17th. Uh, the idea is to get people thinking of the farm as a place of wellness. Uh, you can actually go online and sign up for the 5K. It's a run slash walk slash crawl, whatever you want to do to get through that and just have a good time. There's going to be a kids fun run obstacle course. We're going to do tours of the farm. Uh, we'll be serving food there. Uh, it'll be a good time. We'll have wellness professionals there. There'll be some yoga, uh, some massage, uh, uh, learning more about staying fit. Um, so that's coming up. And then this is just uh, 42 years later. That's in a few words where Lake Village has evolved into an agrarian educational center demonstrating how sustainable agriculture supports community. The farm also serves as an intentional farm community, nature preserve, where anyone choosing to live on the farm or become a member can obtain healthy food, as well as live to learn more in balance with each other and the earth. I think that's it. Um, so I kind of was hoping that uh, this wouldn't take too long, and then that, that from the video and the slideshow that we could generate some questions and then see what else you, you would like to learn or like to know about Lake Village. How many people live there? Uh, right now, probably about 35 people live either on the main farm, in some of our farm housing, or what we call our cooperative. Uh, and in a whole variety of some shared housing, sometimes you have a family in their own house. Have you discussed decision making in this community? Sure. Um, it is, we've gone through so many transitions about how that gets handled. Early on in the 70s, there were community meetings on a, every Sunday, there were community meals five days a week, um, and, and then it maybe evolved to a work Sunday. Instead of talking about what we're going to do, we just get out there and we do it. Um, the decision-making process is almost everyone that's, evolved, that's there on some level has say-so, and they can sort of, if they, if they want to get more involved, they have more say-so. If they'd rather say, hey, this is my home, I want a garden here, I have a job off the farm, so a lot of, most people have jobs off the farm. Um, and I want to stay focused on that, but I really want this to be my home, and you guys kind of handle things, and then I'll kick in some dollars to help keep the place going. That's one way it works. We are uh, under a non-for-profit, so we do have a board, and we have a, a board meeting once a year, and then there's a lot of conversations that go out, go on throughout the year with board members, as well as the people that keep the place running on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, yes? So, 42 years, <clears throat> how, how do you find local politics? Specifically, uh, how we avoided paving? How we avoided what? Paving the, uh, the landscape <coughs> and being compliant with the, with the water and rules and regulations and, and all the One of the keys that I've learned out there is you got to have a willingness to fuss with things and to not be afraid and to push back even though there's laws out there. The laws, a lot of the laws out there, a lot of the regulations out there are not ethical and they were brought up about to make corporations and people money. 
and even a lot of the laws on the books, they're not about helping people uh, who are homeless find housing or learning how to build less expensive homes where uh, they're about promoting economies and the economies aren't always in the favor of economies are run by sort of non-human entities, co big corporations, and they're not always, those, those entities aren't always looking out for people and the land and animals' best interests. So um, <clears throat> you have to be willing to uh, fuss with things, whether it's with the township or with the state, and then also try to make your case as best you can, and then over time, we have a good relationship with the township now. We have a good relationship with the state, um, producing raw, raw, unpasteurized milk. People getting, have gotten busted and in trouble for that. We don't sell raw milk at the farm. You become a member, and now you're an owner of the goat, and so whenever you get that milk, you're drinking milk from your own goats. And so we've had US MDA agents come on the farm and suggest that we were doing something that wasn't lawful, and we explained to them, no, no, this is how it works, and then, or uh, USDA might say, well, we got it. there was a rumor that maybe something needed to change here, and we, we even invited the USDA agent into our house, and we sat down and talked with him. We even offered him a membership to the farm if he was interested, and where he could get <laughs> some local food. And he ended up really helping us. He gave us some good ideas, some pointers, and now our system's even sharper, and uh, our membership base has grown, and, uh, always do um, move in the direction of, 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 of truth and what it is you desire and what it is you really want to, to see uh, around you and, and to be healthy yourself and you want your family to be healthy. So that's a little bit of feedback. <laughs> yes? Do you have any special relationships with uh, um, we have, we've gone to their harvest festival, we've certainly known people that have helped out there, we've known people that are helping to run uh, tillers. We don't have a, 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 any kind of business-like connection to them other than they're doing a great thing, we're, we're, you know, we're supportive of what they do, we like the we're working with horses, um, and we're more focused, I'd say, on that here in the United States, and I think they are a little bit more too these days. I think that they are international and they have some other things going on internationally but I think that they've started to move in the direction of there's a need for that here not as much even though there is a need overseas there's that we need to start finding ways to educate ourselves and our kids how to work with animals and horses and to uh, farm in more sustainable ways No, we actually have, we've developed a lot of accounts. So Rustica is a downtown restaurant. They carry our various pork products. Um, the Crow's Nest, actually the owner of the Crow's Nest, he saw Food Inc. You maybe have seen that movie. And after he saw that, this was maybe seven years ago, he says, I really want to make a change. I want to make a difference. I know it's going to cost more than what I could get through Gordon Foods or some of the other places, but I want to buy all my ground beef and all my pork sausage and all my pork for for pork, uh, pulled pork from Lake Village. So we've done our best to keep up with his demand and that's going really well. We have a few outlets around town at the Great Harvest Bread Store, Irving's Market. Um, uh, we've developed a good relationship with a CrossFit gym and they're one of the partners for the event we'll be having. And uh, the, they're very much interested in uh, our meats, particularly bacon. Me, me, my, me personally, um, well, I would say a lot more in the past, but I've gotten some indications that I need to eat more greens and more vegetables and get, what is that, magnesium or something in my diet. So, I mean, I've always thought that, you know, if I ate grass-fed burger that I was getting my greens because, you know, they're out there eating the grass and everything, but it turns out that I, I need to actually eat some broccoli and some other greens more of the time. But you know, I still shop at Myers. I still uh, pick stuff up at some of the health food stores. Uh, but I, all my milk comes off the farm. 
uh, my honey, um, all my meats, uh, and then I do as much gardening as I can in addition to uh, the other responsibilities I have. We can take maybe about one more question, and then uh, it is about four o'clock, so I want to uh, uh, end at that time. But uh, is there, are there any more questions? Oh, yeah. Yes, we offer internships, and typically they're for people that want to live on the farm. Uh, we, we generally ask people that even are going to volunteer to become a member. Uh, and the reason is, is that creates a sense of responsibility, a tie to the farm, that if we start teaching and training a volunteer how to do the different things, they're more likely to stick around if they're a member versus just coming out for a day to volunteer because we're so busy and there's so many things that we have to do on the farm that we really want to encourage a membership even for folks that um, just want to uh, do some volunteering. But yeah, I think that's, we really encourage that and we'd like to see more of that happen and we'd like to see the universities and schools find ways to, um, uh, in a sense, help bring students out to us at Lake Village so that we can start teaching them and then hopefully they can turn around and start teaching some of the younger preschools and elementary school students out there how to care for the earth. All right. Good. Um, I'm sure you'll be willing to stick around.